the next interesting circuit is known as a multiplexer okay so short form is you usually call it a mux okay mux and a dmux and so on right so what we are basically trying to do by the way in the decoder if you look at uh, what we are trying to do is you can even look at this you know why is it called a decoder because the information of the address is encoded in three bits and we are decoding what that actual information is we are translating that encoded address in and decoding it into a physical location or an address that we are going to go and uh, reach out to so that's why it's called a decoder okay now the next circuit that we uh, that is very commonly used and very useful is the multiplexer okay now what is the multiplexer again let's look at it from the black box perspective okay here i have let's say four inputs i not i1 i2 i3 right and the multiplexer's job is to select one of the four inputs and translate and just connect it to the output okay in some sense it's like you know i have uh, a switch that is actually choosing which input should go to that particular output right so uh, it's it's like on this train track right you have basically uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the train that can come okay and it could turn it could turn and go this way or it could go straight how is that done that is done using one of those levers where you either connect the track and cause the thing to go this way or you cause it to go that way so the input is just going out that way or the input is going out the other way right so this is uh, one um, actually no i think that would be more apt for a demultiplexer so i'll keep that analogy for the demultiplexer for later okay so in any case what i have here is i it's like having uh, you know four different taps okay and i am going to choose one of these taps to fill water into my tank right the the four sources could be different one could be corporation water one could be the bore well one could be a well that i have in my house one could be some rainwater harvested source that i have and i am going to choose which of these uh, uh, taps will fill my tank and i am also going to make the assumption that only one of these will be open at a given time right so if you were to do such an implementation what is the logic circuit that is actually needed okay so um, again it's a 4 is to 1 mux okay i'm looking at this as a 4 is to 1 mux let's look at the truth table as usual so i have i not uh, i1 i2 i3 okay now to select between four inputs i need at least two other select signals because there are four of them that's why you will see even the multiplexer is always the number of inputs is basically in powers of 2 okay the decoder the output was in powers of 2 here we are saying the inputs the number of inputs will go in powers of 2 4 is to 1 multiplexer 8 is to 1 multiplexer 16 is to 1 32 is to 1 and so on okay so i have four inputs and i obviously need two other select lines s1 and s0 these are my two select lines s1 s0 okay and again i have 0001101 okay and now i am not going to worry about this combination actually okay i am going to write this truth table slightly different because you already see for just a 4 is to 1 multiplexer what do i have here i have six input combination so if i wanted to write this truth table out fully i would have to write 64 combinations which is just too complex so i am not going to write all this okay i'll represent this truth table slightly differently i have one output y if s1 s0 is 0 0 then i want i0 to be the thing so what what does that mean it means if i0 is 0 y should be 0 if i1 is i0 is 1 y should be 
or as long as s1 and s0 happen to be 0 0 whatever input you give on y on i0 should simply appear at the output y okay so this is what i want here this will be i1 i2 and i3 okay so now this is um, very interesting because what it basically says is that um, I, I need to first uh, uh, generate some min term, right. So, if I were to write this carefully, uh, y will simply be i0 into m0 plus i1 into m1 plus i2 into m2 plus i3 into m3 okay these are m0 m1 m2 m3 are the min terms that i wanted so how would i go ahead and implement this again it's very straightforward we just do the same thing that we did for the decoder generate true and complement okay for the select signals uh, s1 s0 uh, now m0 is going to be okay so again this could be implemented in different ways i could first generate m0 using a two input and gate if i wish right so this is what i have okay and i could then take this output and and it with i not okay now likewise i could do so this is going to give me m not i 3. So, I will just take this output and this output ok right and I will get the 4 min terms that I wanted for this expression. So, let me call this as some x naught, x 1, x 2 and x 3. So, out here I will get x naught, I will get x 3 then eventually I need to put them through an OR gate because I have the you know sum of products that I want from here you will get x1 then x2 and eventually I will get my multiplexer output y out here ok this is y mux. Okay. So, this is sort of a reasonably straightforward implementation of the multiplexer, right. So, if you look at the, uh, you know, it is also important for you to be able to plot the outputs, uh, you know, as a function of time, okay. For example, I may have, you know, uh, S0 and S1 going through such a cycle okay uh, let me just partition this time into four okay s0 and s1 could be like this s1 s0 this is your i0 okay my input which could be something like this ok and then you could have certain outputs like this ok i1 could be again it you could have very arbitrary activity happening here and 
this output will be like let's say the input change like this okay then my output y of this multiplexer if s0 and s1 were 0 0 so this is 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 right as long as s0 s1 and s0 are 0 0 the output will just follow i0 so therefore y will simply follow i0 here okay when it comes to the next when the input select signal switches to 1 0 s1 is 0 and s0 is 1 then the output will simply follow i1 so it will ignore what is happening on the other inputs and simply appear like this right and I am not showing for the case of I2 and I3, that is also a very straightforward extension. But you should be able to plot this time function as well, uh, you know, depending on the inputs because ultimately the multiplexer will be used in practice for something like this, right? Certain, uh, you know, this is a digital multiplexer, you also have analog multiplexers where the output will just follow the analog signal as it is, right? But ultimately, the, uh, the logic that implements this is going to be very similar at the fundamental level, right? Uh, <clears throat> so, with that, I will stop the discussion on the decoder and the multiplexer and um, we will then look at certain other gates that will help simplify these implementations for us, for us going forward. Mm -hmm.